Chris's father suffered a fatal heart attack yesterday. He passed away. So uh, let's pray for Chris. Let's bow our heads. Abba Father, we thank you for your mercy, your grace. We know that you are the giver and taker of life. We pray that you would be with Chris and his family during this difficult time. Draw him closer to you. And I pray that you would intervene in this situation and bring comfort and blessings to all those who are touched by this tragedy. I pray they feel your presence, your Holy Spirit. Strengthen them. We pray blessings on Chris and all of his family. And bless the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. The other day, I, uh, <clears throat> I've been campaigning since I'm going to be on the ballot. And uh, just yesterday, I went to a church, and uh, they had seven points. Uh, if you're pro-life, if you're pro-biblical family, uh, if you support Israel, uh, some other and other issues like you're against um, the climate change, the Green New Deal agenda, things like that. So I went and I gave a, a, a talk there, a speech. It went very well. And uh, tomorrow is the last uh, campaign event. It's a meet and greet up in Saratoga. And uh, the, the polls are open. Voting has already began. So I think that uh, if there's early voting, it's good for people to avail themselves of the opportunity to early vote. As Michael Berry has talked about this on the radio. Sometimes, well, look what happened in Arizona. You know, they waited to vote uh, till election day. The Republicans, the, the Democrats went out and voted early. And then there's a trap set in Arizona where all the the uh, ballot, the uh, polls, the machines, the voting machines were all, you know, had the wrong size paper, things like that. It's deliberate sabotage. They got away with it. Stealing our elections. So we shouldn't play into their hands or fall in the trap. And Michael Berry saying, hey, what if, you know, I intend to vote on election day and you have a flat tire, fall sick. You know, we need to get out there. We just lost an important seat. It was really ridiculous. They had this George Santos fellow. He didn't, and they're, they're, the, the news, news media didn't like him. I think it's because he's, you know, conservative, Christian. I think he's messianic. And, uh, you know, they, the... The news media is just going hysterical about this guy, and they finally just they expelled him from Congress over nothing. He hasn't been found guilty of anything. And then the Democrats took his seat. And uh, my mother says this, you know, Democrats go out and vote, but if it's, you know, overcast or sprinkling, the Republicans will stay inside. It's like people want to complain about the way things are. They don't want to do anything about it. And we need to be active. We need to be proactive. We need to get involved. So um, there's a couple of things I need to do. I got... One more big mail out coming up soon. I got some text messages. I'm putting up signs. I'm going to put some signs up tonight. There's this one polling area, and they have, they have a big Holt sign. They have a big Bell sign. And it's like, I'm going to put my big sign out there. Right, same size as theirs, right next to theirs. Uh, so that's what's going on. We have less than two weeks now till Election Day. It's about, about two weeks. And uh, we need to vote. Like I said, early voting started yesterday. Uh, I went to the polls today, um, talked to people, and uh, this is a pivotal election. And it's important for us to get involved in the primaries. I guess the big election day is in November, but we have to vote in the primaries because that's when you choose your, your candidate. And we need to get the most con conservative candidates we get, conservative warriors. So uh, this could be out uh, trying to round up some votes so we can win this election. All right, uh, let's look at uh, some scriptures. It says here, Paul says, this is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Be ye followers of me, even as I am also of Christ. I think uh, we should follow the example of the 12 apostles. Now, in our, in our Bibles, of course, New Testament, first we have four versions of the life of Jesus, right? Matthew. They have this, this movie called, the, or a mini-series called The Chosen. 
And uh, there's some things I like about it. There's some things I don't like about it. And uh, if it's getting people into the Bible or strengthening their relationship with, with Christ, I think that's a good thing. There's like some historical inaccuracies. And there's a place where <laughs> in the movie Jesus says, I am the law of Moses. And, uh, you know, there are some Messianics who teach that. And um, Jesus never said, I am the law of Moses in the Bible. In fact, you know, Jesus claims authority over Moses, right? But divorce. Well, Moses said that if a woman wants to get, you know, a man wants to divorce his wife, <clears throat> let him issue, <coughs> excuse me, let him issue a you know, divorce decree, basically. When Jesus says we shouldn't divorce, right? What did God say at the beginning? And we have such high divorce rates, it's, uh, it's terrible. Um, it's the tearing apart the very fra fabric of our society. And we need to um, extol and honor marriage. Amen. And the family, which is under attack. So look at, you know, try to redefine everything and, and all we have is, is chaos. But Jesus said, Moses gave you this law because of the hardness of your heart, right? So Jesus also, when, when he was healing people on the Sabbath, first he said, if your ox falls into a ditch, don't you pull it out as, as you should, Right? I don't think we should let people suffer. And that's, that's what's going on, I think, that to a certain extent. <laughs> There's this woman, was it Ann Jill Levine or something like that? She's looks like, let's look at Jesus through the, the Jewish perspective. And, and that's good. And I was looking at some of her commentary <laughs> and uh, is talking about the story of the, of the Good Samaritan, which is only found in the Gospel of Luke. So what's the story of, of, of the Good Samaritan? <clears throat> This man's going to, <coughs> excuse me. This man is going to Jericho, and uh, he's just walking along, minding his own business, you know. And what happens? He's laid upon by robbers. They beat him, they strip him, and they leave him in the ditch for dead. I mean, back then, clothes were expensive. Some people only had, you know, one one robe or one tunic. So they took everything and just left him beaten, bloody in the ditch. And then a priest goes by. He sees him in the ditch. And where does he go? He goes to the other side of the road and moves on. And then a Levite, which is a lesser order priest, does the same thing. Then a Samaritan... And from the Jewish perspective, actually, the Jewish perspective, they didn't look out at Samaritans as being proper Israelites. They thought they, thought they were descendants of Assyrians. Yeah. Right? right? Excuse me. Descendant of Assyrians. They weren't pure, pure Jewish. Of course, I think the Samaritan point of view, there's still some Samaritans left, about a thousand. Their, their point of view is that they're the true Israelites and they look upon the Jews as Israelites as well, but they believe that they're the ones who remain true. You know, we're pure and we're true, and you're the ones that are. So he had this uh, conflict. I mean, there's a large population of Samaritans at the time of Jesus. It's like a nation. I mean, you didn't have independence. You know, the Roman Empire ruled over everything, but it was a. Uh, I mean, I guess it's a demographic reality of this area called Samaria, inhabited by the Samaritans, and they're the majority population. They're a large ethnic group. And they had this, this friction, this animosity between the Samaritans and the Jews. But the Jewish perspective of the Samaritans is they, they're, they're not true Israelites. They're a mixed breed. and they don't See, that the Samaritans only accept the Torah and maybe the book of Joshua, and they reject the rest of the Bible. So these people are religious, messed up. Plus, they're, work, they're worshiping Mount Gerizim, and it was believed that Mount you know, Zion, Jerusalem, was a proper place to worship. So you have this great conflict between the Jews and the Samaritans. And uh, then the Samaritan, who's looked down upon by the, by the Jewish people, he sees the man in the ditch, and he, you know, he washes his injuries. He takes him to a, an, an inn and, and uh, you know, pays for several days and says, if, he, you know, if there's any more expenses, charge it to my account to take care of this man. So the idea is, who's the neighbor? Was this the, the, the priest the neighbor? No. 
was the Le Levi the neighbor. No. Who was the neighbor to this man that fell among the thieves? Or fell upon by the thieves, right? <laughs> He's beaten and left for dead. The Samaritan, right? The man who showed him compassion. Well, go and do likewise, right? But it seems like uh, what's going on is this man was going from Jerusalem to Jericho, and these, these uh, priests were going to Jerusalem. Why? To worship. And the law of Moses has these very strict laws about ritual purity, right? You can't touch a dead body. You can't touch blood. If you do, you have to be unclean for several days. You have to wash all your garments and stay apart from people. And this angel of Levine is like, well, that doesn't have to do anything with Torah. Uh, you know, and it's like it does. I mean, their interpretation, their, their religious practice, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus says, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. Yeah, right? Well, but these people, you know, I, I, you, it, it's wrong what they did. They should be, we should be concerned about our, you know, like I said, if an animal falls in the ditch, you know, any, you know, if it's suffering, you should just walk by. Oh, it's the Sabbath day, right? You need to help save people are hurt. And uh, with with this this Samaritan, or not this actually is a, a Jewish man, what the story is, right? An Israelite, yeah. a true Israelite, not a Samaritan who was felt who was attacked by the thieves, right? Just fell upon by him. And uh, but if someone who's looked as a foreigner is the one who who helped him. So I think I think it is true that these people are thinking, you know, people could do it themselves, right? You know, you're in the car, you're going to church on a Sunday, and you know, everybody's dressed, you know, you got your, you're dressed nice in your church clothes, right? And all the kids, you know, it's hard to get all the kids wrangled up, and they're all being good, and then you see something happens. You want, to, you know, a lot of people have the temptation just to go on, right? It's too much of a hassle, but we have to put people first, not you know. Not your, your Sunday clothes. I think this is the same thing, right? These these priests are like, if, you know, what if I get all bloody? What if he's already dead? I'll have to go through, you know, I'm going to worship in the temple, and this way, you know, if I touch him, I'll have to do all these purification ceremonies, you know. Um, so the law might have compelled them by the law of Moses. Uh, you know, they should have helped that man, but because of the observances, right? That's what Jesus attacked, putting the letter of the law above the spirit of the law or just the inconvenience um but what, what does james the brother jesus say you know pure religion undefiled is this you know, taking care of the poor and the widows and the fatherless showing compassion to other people that's what we need to do and we need to get in the bible uh and read the bible and do evangelism and soul winning share the gospel with other people right? right and uh I, I know it, it's difficult but we should also try to be a, a good example to other people you know it's kind of fun i want to do lifestyle evangelism well, what does that mean well i'm just gonna live a christian life and people see i'm a good person and all. that's not how it works Where, where's lifestyle evangelism in the bible we're supposed to tell people about jesus right that's a cop out you know and uh, people, I mean, it's, 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 I don't believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. You know, some people think that, uh, we're looking at, like I said, in the, in the gospel of Luke, it says that the rapture event is described as taking place after the, the great tribulation. But what's the, the idea, the concept behind the pre-tribulation rapture? It's like, oh, well, uh, God's people are going to spare, God's going to spare them of suffering. We started this, this uh, lesson we're talking about Paul saying, "Be you know followers of me, as I am also I, I also am a follower of Christ." Right now we have Matthew, one of the apostles. Mark was seems to me he was a child. He probably knew Jesus when he was a when you know Jesus was an adult. Mark was a child. Uh, tradition says that that Peter instructed Mark. Luke is a convert of Paul who assembled the gospel of Luke. And then we have John. So two of the 12 apostles wrote gospels, right? But the other two, you know, Mark and Luke, are derived from the 12 apostles, right? Mark and Luke wrote down what they were taught by the apostles. And if you read the book of Acts, there are several places where Luke says us and we because he's participating in the events he's writing about. 
going to Jerusalem. So it's pretty likely that that Luke met people, many people who knew Jesus, including the twelve apostles. And, and look at look at the life of Paul, right? In the book of Acts. And, and in his epistles he talks about it. He suffered for Jesus. And we have the, the stories of the twelve apostles that the church fathers have recorded for us. Let me go check on something. Hmm? Who was that from? Uh, it was somebody dragging a wagon down the road. And uh, Baron and Rambo got excited. So. All right. So let's talk about the apostles really quick, right? If you read the book of Acts, Peter himself arrested, sentenced to death, a divine, miraculous escape. Then he goes into hiding for some time, right? James, the, the brother of John, James, the son of Zebedee, beheaded, right? Paul's sufferings are described, beaten. Stoned several times. Paul talks about shipwrecked. He goes, In my body I bear the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. What is he talking about? And he's beaten so many times and stoned that he could show you scars in his body for what he suffered for Jesus. I talked about this before. We have the 12 apostles. And let's look at them. Peter. Crucified in Rome. Andrew, crucified in, in Scythia. James, beheaded by Herod Agrippa I. John, well, according to tradition, he's the only one that, that died of old age, but there are traditions that there's kind of disagreements of was there more than one John, but some traditions say that John even was Martyr, but the stories that he survived, things that should have killed him, right? They poisoned him. The Bible talks about in the, the Gospel of Mark, they'll give you poison that will not harm you. Boiled in, in oil. The Lord had a purpose for John to live, right? But he should have died from the torments that they subjected him to. So, yes, the tradition is that the majority tradition is he died, lived in old age. So, then we have uh, Matthew and James, the son of Alphaeus. Well, not really clear traditions, but there's stories that both of them uh, were martyred. Thomas, stabbed with a spear. Nathaniel, skinned alive. And then we have Philip, crucified. And uh, Jude, the brother of... Uh, James, uh, Jude Thaddeus, dismembered, right? So we have stories that almost all the apostles died a martyr's death. So three of them, when Jesus says, whoever desires, I've said this before, but Jesus said, whoever desires to come and follow me, let him deny himself, lift up his, take up his cross and follow me. Peter was crucified. Philip uh, was crucified. And Andrew was crucified. So for three of the 12 apostles, which is 25%, that wasn't metaphorical or symbolic language, right? Yeah. They literally had to deny themselves, pick up the cross. And the story of the crucifixion of Jesus in the end of the Gospel of John, he prophesies to Peter, tells him that he will be crucified. I mean, the language implies, it describes the process of crucifixion going to the place of execution, being led to the place you want to go, being stretched out, obviously. Uh, and that's the tradition that Peter was crucified in Rome and Paul beheaded in Rome because that's the uh, um, the sentence that uh, if you're given a death sentence, the Roman the crucifixion is a very horrific way to die. And beheading was considered quick and uh, more humane. 
So these people gave their lives for us to give us the good news. And uh, we, you know, people don't want to be made uncomfortable, right? Right. You know, they, they don't want to deal with uncomfortable issues. I understand, you know, life is difficult. And people want to be encouraged. They want to have happiness. And the Lord does give us happiness and joy, right? We also have purpose. And we should have determination. And sometimes we have to embrace the sufferings the way Jesus did, the way the 12 apostles did. Uh, suffer for the greater good. But, you know, like Jesus said, I come that you could have life and have it abundantly. And there's many scriptures about being empowered uh, and living a victory, a victorious life. You know, I, I do believe this. They, they call it the law of attraction. I think there's something to it. I don't call it a law of attraction. We call it a, a principle um, where, you know, faith is rewarded, right? If you live by faith, the Lord will bless you. If you live by doubt and fear, right, you reap its own reward, right? Faith is a blessing. Doubt and fear uh, is its own curse, its own reward, which is a, a terrible reward. We need to walk in faith and walk in the joy of the Lord, but be willing to suffer for the Lord if need be. All right, let's close the word of prayer. I'll get you guys back. Let's bow our heads. Abba Father, once again, we pray for Chris that you be with him and bless him in his hour of need as he has lost his father. Pray that you comfort him. And uh, bless him and his mother and the whole family and all their family and friends as he goes through this difficult time. It says, as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, death, as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil, for thou art with us. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us. So we pray that you comfort Chris uh, during this difficult time and bless him. And we pray this in the name of Yeshua, our Savior and Lord. Amen.